Have you ever found yourself popping bubble wrap for fun, only to suddenly wonder, wait a minute, how did the air even get inside these tiny bubbles in the first place? It's such a simple thing. Thin sheets of plastic with little pockets of air trapped inside. But when you think about it, it's actually kind of amazing. Each bubble is perfectly sealed, consistent in size, and can stay inflated for years without leaking. So how do manufacturers actually fill those bubbles with air? And how do they make sure the air doesn't escape? Let's unwrap the story behind bubble wrap, literally right here on History of Simple Things. Before we get into how it's made, you should know, bubble wrap wasn't originally invented for packaging. In fact, its first purpose was something completely different. Back in 1957, two engineers, Alfred Fielding and Mark Chavan, were trying to create a new kind of wallpaper. They sealed two shower curtains together in an attempt to make a textured wall covering with trapped air pockets for decoration. It didn't really catch on as wallpaper. Imagine trying to clean that. But when they looked at their failed invention again, they realized those little air bubbles could protect fragile objects during shipping. And just like that, bubble wrap was born. But here's the part that people rarely think about. How do you actually trap air in between two plastic sheets in a way that's airtight, flexible, and mass-producible? That's where the real magic and engineering comes in. Let's start with what bubble wrap is made of. The main ingredient is a type of plastic called polyethylene, specifically low-density polyethylene, or LDPE for short. This is the same material used in plastic bags and cling film. It's lightweight, flexible, and most importantly, it melts and seals easily when heated. The process begins with tiny plastic pellets, which are melted down into a thick, gooey liquid. This molten plastic is then extruded, basically squeezed, into thin sheets. At this point, it's just plain flat plastic film. No bubbles, no air just clear film waiting to be transformed. Now comes the clever part, creating those perfect little bubbles. And believe it or not, most bubble wrap isn't filled one bubble at a time. The air gets trapped automatically during a continuous process called vacuum forming. Here's how it works. Imagine a large rotating drum with hundreds of tiny holes on its surface, each hole shaped like a bubble. One of the thin plastic sheets is laid over this drum while a vacuum pump sucks air out through the holes. As the vacuum pulls, the soft plastic film is sucked down into the holes, forming small, perfectly shaped dimples. So far, there's still no air trapped inside. You just have one sheet with little cup-like pockets. Now another flat sheet of plastic, still warm and soft, is pressed over it. As the two layers touch, they're heat sealed together around the edges of each pocket, trapping air inside every single bubble. That's it. The air doesn't have to be pumped into each bubble. It's simply the normal air that was between the sheets when they were sealed. Each bubble is like a mini balloon made during the sealing process itself. So if the air isn't pumped in, how come the bubbles stay inflated for years? The secret lies in the seal and the material. The heat sealing process melts the two layers just enough that they fuse together. This fusion creates an airtight bond, no gaps, no leaks. Polyethylene itself doesn't let air pass through easily. It's what scientists call a low gas permeability material meaning oxygen molecules take a long time to sneak through it. That's why bubble wrap can keep its pop for years if it's stored well. Though over time, especially with heat or pressure, the air can slowly leak out, making old bubble wrap a little flatter. Still, the design works beautifully. Two layers, a vacuum mold, and a bit of heat, 
and you've got millions of tiny air cushions ready to protect fragile items. Today's bubble wrap factories can make hundreds of meters of wrap every minute. It's a continuous automated process that runs 24 7 in some plants. First, plastic pellets go into an extruder, a giant heated screw that melts and flattens them into film. That film is then rolled over the vacuum drum we mentioned earlier to form the bubbles. A second layer is pressed and sealed on top almost instantly. From there, the finished bubble wrap is cooled, trimmed, and rolled up. Some machines can even make different bubble sizes, tiny ones for small electronics or big ones for furniture and appliances. Fun fact, the bigger the bubble, the better it is at absorbing shock. But the smaller bubbles are better at surface protection. So next time you get a package and notice those different bubble sizes, now you'll know. Each type was engineered for a specific kind of protection. Now there's a bigger conversation around plastics in general, including bubble wrap. Traditional bubble wrap isn't biodegradable, and because it's made from polyethylene, it can take hundreds of years to break down. That's why many companies are now shifting toward recyclable or biodegradable alternatives. Some eco-friendly versions use plant-based materials or can be recycled along with plastic bags. There's even paper bubble wrap which uses layers of honeycomb patterned paper that mimic the cushioning of air bubbles. No plastic, no waste. So while the original bubble wrap was a brilliant invention, it's continuing to evolve with the times, balancing protection with sustainability. So the next time you open a package and see bubble wrap, take a second to appreciate what's really going on. Each of those tiny bubbles was carefully molded, sealed, and filled, trapping ordinary air in an extraordinary way. No tiny air pumps, no manual filling, just smart design and clever use of physics and materials. It's one of those inventions that seems simple, but represents a surprising amount of creativity and engineering. And maybe, just maybe, when you pop one of those bubbles, you'll think not just about the sound, but about the science that made it possible. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.